In this video I'm going to show you how to install and set up the Arduino IDE or Integrated Development Environment so you can communicate with your ESP32 development board, the one that we're going to use for all of our projects. So this is the program that you'll use to send code uh, from your editor in to the uh, development board and also how to, if, if your um, development board is measuring a sensor, you can also have it send the data back out to your computer screen so you can see what's happening. So the Arduino IDE is a download so just Google Arduino IDE download something like that and you'll get to this screen uh, where you can download the editor. And so what I usually recommend is to download the Arduino IDE and if you're a Windows user download the Windows installer for Windows 7 and up. If you're a Mac user use this one and if you have a Linux laptop try one of these based on um, uh, what size you have. And once you uh, click on that it'll take you over to this screen where you can make a contribution to uh, Arduino if you like. Uh, I usually do like once a year after that um, I just download. But you don't have to make a contribution if you're a student don't worry about that. And once you download it it's just a tr very traditional uh, installer like you're used to doing. You can click on it and uh, open that up and it'll ask you if you want to install it and you say yes. I've already done so so I'm going to say no. Now once you've installed it you can um, activate the application and you should see something like this come up on your screen. This is the Arduino integrated development environment. Right now at the time I made this video we're at 1.8.13 that's the latest one. Now this is where you type in your code that you're going to send over to the uh, to the device but first we have to get it configured for the ESP32. Okay so to do that you go to the preferences here and it'll open up a screen like this and you want to add this command to the additional boards manager URLs okay and you can see it there but an easy way to do that to get it to copy and paste it in here is to go over to the um, ESP32 thing plus hookup guide Recall this is the board that we're going to use a lot for our beginning projects, the SparkFun ESP Thing Plus. So if you go to SparkFun's website, type in the ESP Things Plus, um, get to this one. Now they have two versions, so make sure you're getting the right one. It's the one that says WROOM after it. Okay, it's a nice video here you can watch telling you a little bit about the board, a little bit of a discussion about some of the key parts on the board. We'll talk about this later. But for right now, um, if you move on down to software setup, which is what we're up to today, um, you can see right here is that address that you want to put into the preferences tab. Okay so again you could copy that code right there and then go back to your Arduino preferences and paste that in right there if you wanted to. You can open this up if you want a little bit more room you know so I could paste this in right here and hit OK. That's an important step. And then you hit OK here. If you want to check that to make sure it really worked, just go back to your preferences again. That should be there. And that's downloading will help set up the core for the ESP32 within the development environment. Okay, the next step that we have to do is go to Tools and go to Board and Board Manager. Okay, so Go to Tools, Board, Board Manager. Click on that. And 
this is where you install uh, data for individual boards. If you type in ESP32, this should appear now. Okay, this won't appear unless you set up those preferences first. Okay, so do that, and then you want to install that. Now I've already installed it, so it shows the word installed here. But yours won't show that, and just click on the install button and it'll install. Now it takes a little while. It's it's a large amount of data, so um, don't let that concern you. It just takes it quite a while to download. So once you get the preferences and then you install the ESP32 core with the boards manager. Now when you go to tools and you go to board, okay, um, you can see that I have two choices here now my Arduino boards and my ESP32 boards so this will appear now once you've got that done correctly and if you there's a whole bunch of different ESP32 boards and the one that we want to select is the Adafruit ESP32 Feather now Adafruit was the first company to make an ESP32 board with what's called the Feather footprint that's the pin arrangement on the board but SparkFund basically copied that strategy so we can use the Adafruit um, designation even though we're using a SparkFund ESP32. So you click on that and now you notice here under board it says ESP32 Feather. That's what you want to see. Okay. Now we're ready to uh, think about sending a program to our ESP32 board. Now, a really good program to test whether you've got your system set up correctly, if you go to File and Examples, if you go under Basics, there's a program called Blink. So go to Examples, Basics, Blink. And all this program does is flash the LED on the um, development board. So there's a built-in LED on the on the um, ESP32 development board from SparkFun and this is going to flash it every one second and that's what's going on down here in the main loop. We can see that it turns it uh, turns it on for us and waits a second, turns it off and waits a second. So you should just see that little one second on, one second off, right? So we want to download that to our ESP um, 32. Now, over here on my camera you can see my ESP32 uh, feather and I've got it connected to the, um, you, now I'm going to connect it to the, and I've got it connected to my um, uh, computer via USB. You don't need anything else connected. It can be just like this. And if you go over to your tools menu now, you have to select the port where your USB uh, device appeared. Okay. Now let me. I'm going to unplug it for a second. Okay. And go back to tools. See how the port is grayed out now? Nothing available. Okay. So there's nothing there for me to connect to. But if I plug it back in. and I have to go back to the tools menu and now there's my available port that happens to be the one that um, where it's plugged in and I'm going to select it now if your port doesn't appear you may need to install a driver okay a lot of the time this driver is already available but go back over to your ESP32 plus hookup guide and if you scroll down here a ways, there's a little section called Installing the CP2104 USB Driver. Okay, and there's one for Windows and one for Mac. So if you don't, if you can't seem to get your port to appear on the uh, Arduino IDE, try installing one of these drivers. You may have to exit the Arduino IDE completely and reboot, or not reboot your computer, but um, restart the Arduino IDE and see if you can um, uh, see if it'll work then okay because it should be able to find it automatically okay 
and here you see it's also in the um, hookup guide walking you through the blink example but I'm going to go back over to my Arduino IDE now and I'm connected to um, I, I've got the right board selected the Arduino the Adafruit ESP32 feather and I'm showing that I'm connected to it on COM37 in my case yours will probably yours will definitely have a different number don't worry about that as long as there's a COM there um, that seems to appear and disappear when you connect your board then you've got the right one and now I'm ready to download this flash program to the IDE or to my board excuse me and so I'm gonna hit this arrow right here upload and it's gonna compile the program and you want to watch down here at the bottom in this space and see what's happening it says compiling sketch sketch is just another word they use for program in the Arduino vernacular and it may take it a little while uh, depending on the kind of computer you have um, don't worry about that now it says it's done and it's uploading now it says connecting and that's good when you see this kind of behavior and it says writing leaving hard resetting via RTS pin that's good okay now if we look over at our board we can see this blue light now flashing off and on it's exactly what we wanted right so uh, that showed that everything worked we successfully set up our IDE and we communicated with it and we sent a program and you're really far along at this point you're kind of done with that you won't have to do that anymore and we can start working projects if you want to just do something for fun for example you could let's say we change this to five seconds we could upload it again Okay, that's it's it's in milliseconds, so that's actually now it's going to be on for five seconds and off for five seconds, right? So we should be able to see that reflected actually over on the hardware. There it goes again. It's connecting, and it downloaded. Okay, hard resetting via RTS pin, and now if we look over here on our uh, board we see we are indeed getting what we expected a five second on and a five second off all right so that's the first step in uh, setting up your ESP32 development board to do projects in the class and uh, in the next video we'll actually connect a sensor to our uh, ESP32 and start uh, taking some measurements